thought about what it would be like to make a faithful adaption of the beloved video game and or slash comic book series that you loved growing up? Well, neither has Hollywood. And you know, it seems to me like they don't understand the rules of baseball either, because this is Constantine Films' third attempt with the Resident Evil franchise that's failed, and at last time I checked, three strikes and you're out. Hey dudes and dudettes, I'm Derek with Gamesomniac, and today we're going to be reviewing Netflix's live-action adaption of Resident, Resident Evil. Alright, so real quick, let me just say that technically the first series of Resident Evil films featuring Mia Jovovich didn't actually fail. No, see, actually the first set of films were quite successful. They were considered a commercial success, one of the biggest video game adaptions to ever come out of Hollywood. However, their lack of faithfulness to the source material easily made them a hot target for diehard fans to crap all over. This new Netflix series is no different, however IGN and GameSpot would have you believe otherwise. It's the greatest TV show of our time. There has never been a Resident Evil adaption so great before this. You know, it's crazy how a 130 second TV commercial for Resident Evil 2, directed by George A. Romero in 1998, is still the most faithful live action Resident Evil adaption we've gotten in 20 years. Yeah, what about that Resident Evil 2 remake live action commercial? Shut up, shut up! I have to admit, the Netflix show is a bit of a mixed bag for me. It feels very heavily inspired by the works that came before it, more specifically the Paul W.S. Anderson films, considering it takes ideas and concepts like having it set in a zombie-ridden post-apocalyptic wasteland, where Umbrella is still very much an authoritarian presence, but there's some things within this concept that it does better than the movies prior. I'll admit, there's things that I liked, there's a lot that I didn't, and overall it's a show for the casual public, if that, but surely not fans of the Resident Evil series. Allow me to take you on a tour and show you all of the cool and memorable things that this TV show had to offer. Alright, you see this guy? This is Bert. Bert is quite literally the best part of this entire show. I am so glad I stuck around because Bert is a huge payoff for all of the shit you have to endure while watching the show. He's a badass, he's funny, he's the comic relief of the show while also being the innocent one. Spoiler alert kids, Bert is one of the three Albert Wesker clones. You see, Albert Wesker, being the Resident Evil big bad that he is, went ahead and made three clones of himself who he then used as slaves to work underground inside of some umbrella laboratory, I guess. And their job was basically to upgrade his tech, um, I don't know, upgrade his sunglasses, give him a haircut, I don't know, all kinds of evil, diabolical Albert Wesker stuff. And you've seen this concept a million times. Each clone of Wesker took on a part of his personality. Bert's personality is that of just a big kid. He's very innocent. He listens to music while he works. He forgets about food that he's cooking in the microwave. And he's very naive. But because he's a clone of Albert fucking Wesker, he's also secretly a badass and knows how to kill people and fight people and destroy things. Bert was incredible. He was awesome. The scenes that he's in are actually fun to watch. This show was fucking boring and he made it so much better. So if anything, watch this show for Bert or just watch the episodes that Bert's in. So I think by now it's safe to say that the general consensus is that Lance Reddick is a great actor who basically carried the show on his shoulders. And truth be told, I've got to agree with that sentiment because again, with all of the personalities he had to portray between him, Bert, the real Albert Wesker, the dude did a fucking great job. And again, Bert was probably my favorite thing about the show. So you gotta give it up to Lance Reddick. I think he really is the overall huge highlight of this series. Future Jade is so much better than her teenage counterpart. She's a mother, she's a bit of a badass, she's out risking her life in this dystopian future full of death and destruction, while her sister, the head of Umbrella, hunts her down. And unlike her teenage self, she's out here doing things instead of being annoying and reading Zootopia porn. She actually reminds me of Alice from the Paul W.S. Anderson movies, but like from Wish.com, so superpowers not included. I quite often found myself asking, why doesn't she just blow away the f Umbrella foot soldiers with her telekinesis, only to realize that I'm not watching the PWSA series. Then I found myself wanting to rewatch those movies instead of this series, but I managed to stick it out. 
Long story short, Future Jade has a lot more going on for herself than her teenage counterpart. Her character dynamic has flipped, making her somewhat relatable, possibly even likable, and she had some really awesome action scenes. So there's that. This is Richard Baxter. He's a lackey for the Umbrella Corporation and in charge of finding Jade Wesker. I hated this dude. Every time I saw him, he was an idiot. He was a slob, ah, dude was gross. But unbeknownst to the audience, this guy is a bad mother fluffer. He actually helps Jade when they're captured in France by a cult who feeds intruders and outsiders to their queen zombie. And this dude, while shot, helps Jade escape and goes on a badass montage killing cult members and zombies with two red nines from Resident Evil 4. He absolutely flipped the script and became this somewhat likable character in the moment. And then he died. I wasn't even going to mention Evelyn at all during this review, and if I had, she probably would have ended up being mentioned in the negative part of this review. But the more I thought about it, I hated Evelyn. She was an absolute see you next Tuesday. And what I realized is that was the part and she played it perfectly. They made Evelyn very much like Patrick Bateman. Every time she opened her mouth, she would exuberate this God tier cockiness like she was a wolf on Wall Street. She acted like a shark. I was actually shocked when she killed her own son after Billy bit him, but like she didn't even hesitate. And she drugged her own wife with joy. This umbrella miracle drug full of the T-virus, which I'm pretty sure had not been approved to go through human trials yet. Evelyn was umbrella incarnate. Now one thing I have to give credit to is this series quite possibly has the best special effects out of all the Resident Evil adaptions, at least in my opinion. The gore was awesome and plentiful, meanwhile the CGI monsters such as the Cerberus and Lickers, they looked extremely solid unlike Resident Evil Welcome to Raccoon City. I've seen some reviews on YouTube crapping on the CGI, but see for yourself. The practical effects on the zombies looked really good too, and the Umbrella Lab in New Raccoon City was pretty impressive. I mean, I'm not sure how much of that was green screen versus built sets versus on location, but you can definitely see the work that they put into the facility. I personally preferred everything happening in 2036 over what happened in 2022. I'm living in 2022. It sucks. I know it sucks. I don't need to see these two bland and tasteless characters deal with their problems and daddy issues. I've already lived it, baby. There's more action and monsters and all around more things to see in the future scenes. But truth be told, the future scenes in this show, I'm willing to bet are directly inspired by the original Resident Evil series, specifically Extinction and Afterlife. And again, I suppose that's not a problem, but if I'm gonna be put through the same storyline that I've already seen before, I'd much rather watch Alice with her T-Virus superpowers go out into the wasteland and just clean house. Honestly, that's all I can say the series has going for it. Now we're gonna rant, kids. We're gonna infect this show with the G-Virus so it can grow 20 butts for us to rip new assholes into. Let's get this out of the way. I loathe the teenage versions of the girls. They both suck. You can't root for them in all of their sucky glory. I never thought in all my years on this prison we call the Earth that I would ever have to bear witness to a Billie Eilish Resident Evil crossover. And do you know why this was important? Because Billie Eilish is Billie's namesake. It's cool, it's hip. It's Billie, spelled B-I-L-L-I-E instead of B-I-L-L-Y. That's amazingly progressive, ah! The girls suck. Teenage Billy and Jade are both little shits that do nothing but get in trouble and backtalk their dad. Seriously, they pushed and pushed that man after everything he did for them. That shit would have lasted all but a second in my house before my parents whooped my ass. Boy, let me tell you. Dr. Salvador isn't Dr. Salvador. He's just some cult member dressed up that way because fan service and they take him out just as quick as they force him on screen, so. Netflix's version of the real Albert Wesker is hilarious. I, I don't even know what to say, man. Like, my biggest complaint is that he has hair. 
All of the clones are bald. I went through this whole show looking at a bald-headed Albert Wesker. He really didn't need to have hair. Although, let's be real, if they made him bald, fans probably would have then teased him for looking like Shaft or Morpheus instead of Blade. So, I guess you're damned if you do, damned if you don't. All right, now this is something that really tickles my taint with a cheese grater. Along the way, it was decided by people who make more money than you and I ever will that instead of having all of these alphabet viruses, why not just have one that does everything? And so it was done! The T-Virus then became the Alpha and the Omega. It could turn you into a zombie or give you superhuman abilities. Sometimes it doesn't kill the host, it just rewires their brain. And other times it turns crocodiles into G-Monsters. The T-Virus has become a plot device that does whatever the plot demands, but this version of T, the NET, Flix version of the virus, is by far the worst. It doesn't kill the host and reanimate the body. It reprograms their brains and mutates the host, taking away their eyesight and hearing, making them rely on smell to hunt. Excuse me? A baking powder? There's also this gigantic caterpillar in the show, which to me looked visually fantastic. However, the characteristics of its mutation are that of the G-Virus, which does not exist. So how in the cucking doodle dick did that happen? There's no real explanation on how the virus works, it just does, and that's awesome because we need monsters in this show. The 2022 storyline is garbage, and it's kind of crazy because in some of the reviews that I've seen on here, people were praising the 2022 CW teen drama storyline, citing it as being significantly better than the 2036 timeline, and I don't know how in the hell they came to that conclusion. I tried, kids. I, I tried to see it from their point of view, but I can't. I can only assume these reviewers are as blind as the zombies because it sucks. The 2022 timeline basically shows what shitty children the Wesker kids are, bad-mouthing their father every five minutes, breaking into their dad's lab and umbrella and not giving a shit if he gets fired or not, Jade's constantly cock-teasing this kid Simon into helping her be even more of a brat. It's so stupid! At least the 2036 timeline had all the monsters, action, and gore, things that were exciting to see. All you see in the 2022 timeline is Billy go to the bathroom every five minutes to zomb out, Jade constantly trying to get her sister to confide in her, but she doesn't because Billy knows what a horrible character she is, and then there's a 52 hour timer that counts down as we wait in anticipation to see if Billy is gonna go zombie and cause the outbreak, which we all know doesn't happen because she was revealed to be alive and well in the 2036 timeline of the first goddamn damn episode. The writing on this show is amazingly incompetent. First off, why are we making TV shows that jump between two timelines? That is the stupidest concept ever. It breaks the immersion. Your viewers can never truly get invested into the show because you're popping them in and out of two different story arcs with no time to really understand what's going on in either. And then from a production side of things, you're just cutting your nose off to spite your face by doing this because by including the other timeline, you're losing precious minutes and seconds to add details that may actually help tell a better story. You also lose out on content. Season 1 could have been the 2036 timeline, ending the show with a flashback to 2022 that introduces the audience to season 2 of the show, which would then take place in 2022. You could have done that and then had two seasons already lined up, or you could have just not made this fucking show. I'm gonna be honest, I actually didn't even have the mental capacity to take in any of the progressive wokeness that's rooted into the horrible writing, but after watching people in other reviews talk about it, I went back and looked through the episodes, and it's crazy that I was able to miss all of the social political pandering. For example, and I completely missed this fact altogether, but New Raccoon City is actually located in South Africa. I noticed when I watched this show for the first time that New Raccoon City was kind of reminiscent to like the Stepford Wives community. Everything was all neat and proper and uniform and overall kind of white. Not only in design, but also in population, at least in the first episode. This leads into a discussion between Jade and Billy about the lack of black people in town, which there are, and you see the town is actually pretty diverse in other episodes, like when they're at school. So for the first few minutes of the show, you don't see the diversity, but it's there. Then you start to see it at later points in the show, but the characters aren't concerned with it anymore, so it doesn't matter. When they meet with Carol, who's like their real estate agent, she tells them how great the town is and everything it has to offer, such as shopping, entertainment, and that they were voted the best place to live in 2021, Jade then asks if guys who jerk off to CrossFit and Elon Musk were among the ones who voted. Now, kids, I'm gonna, I'm gonna need some help with this one. I don't get out often, so I, who's jerking off to CrossFit? Like, what the hell is even that? Why the fuck did she say that? The Elon Musk thing makes sense. I mean, he's being sued by Twitter now, and he's all in the news, so I mean, it's, it's, it's topical. But this is the kind of shit that you're introduced to in, the, like, the first 10 minutes of the series, so good luck. 
I really don't know what else I can say about this show, guys and gals. It, it's it's not a series for the fans at all. It doesn't respect the source material, and the Japanese hate it. They want nothing to do with it. That That's pretty bad. The Japanese are going around and calling this series politically correct hazard. Like, that's fucking hilarious. And like, I would be embarrassed if I took on your intellectual property, something you created, and I made something that I thought was gonna be special and unique and it gets fucking trashed and the people who created it hate it. They absolutely hate it. Like Al Gore in the PMRC hearings, when he gets Frank Zappa up to testify, he's a huge fan of Frank Zappa, loves the dude's work, loves it, tells him he's a huge fan. Frank Zappa's sitting there not impressed. He's like, dude, you're a dick. Like, that's what this is. That's embarrassing. So, in closing, watch it or don't, I don't care. But if you do watch it, come back and tell me what you thought in the comments below. If you guys had a good time and you liked this review, please consider giving it a like. It really helps us out here on the channel. And consider checking out our Resident Evil playlist full of all kinds of other RE content. Or check out some of our other gaming reviews and discussions. Be sure to subscribe to the channel for more video game news and entertainment. And on that note, I'm Derek with Game Somniac, and I will catch you bitches later. Bye-bye!